migraines, blindness, seizures, stroke, dementia, all reported side effects of aspartyl phenylalanine one methyl ester, also known as aspartame. Aspartame is the subject of intense controversy these days regarding its toxicity. In this video, I'm going to do my best to show you that this controversy is just an industry-funded smokescreen and why it's clearly a very harmful substance. We'll take quick looks at how aspartame breaks down in the body, the real history of its approval, and the scope and volume of personal testimonials. Aspartame, or NutraSweet, is 200 times sweeter than sugar and the most widely consumed artificial sweetener in the world, found in over 6,000 products including diet foods, candies, gums, and drinks. It has a number of different brand names or pseudonyms that it's also known as, and I've listed some of those on the screen. Aspartame is composed of three different brain-damaging neurotoxins, aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methanol. Aspartic acid, when present in excess, becomes an excitotoxin in the form of free glutamate, meaning that it can excite or stimulate brain cells to death. Phenylalanine, although a naturally occurring amino acid in the brain, is neurotoxic when present in large amounts. And methanol, or wood alcohol, is so severely toxic that long-term outcomes of ingesting even a small amount include blindness, kidney failure, and death. This is incredibly concerning because it's been widely documented that when aspartame in beverages is heated to above 86 degrees Fahrenheit, the methyl ester then converts into methanol, which breaks down into formaldehyde and formic acid in your body, which then causes metabolic acidosis and can mimic symptoms of multiple sclerosis. Beware of industry-funded or otherwise corrupted websites such as aspartame.org, healthline.com, and Wikipedia, all of which seek to obfuscate the truth and convince people that aspartame is safe, when in fact the real historical breakdown shows the truth very clearly. Let's look at the scrubbed historical timeline at aspartame.org now, and then we'll compare it to the real one. As we can see, in 1965, aspartame is discovered. 1981, FDA approves aspartame for use in dry goods. 1983, FDA increases acceptable daily intake for aspartame and then later expands approval for carbonated drinks. And in 84, CDC dismisses consumer concerns regarding aspartame. And that's all the entries up until 1999 when they tell you that the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation invalidates claims that aspartame can cause MS. But are those really all the notable events that occurred in the first 35 years of its history? Not even close. As you might guess, they only mention the events that show aspartame in a favorable light. Now let's run down just a small sample of the events that they didn't care to mention. In 1967, two years after discovering aspartame, the company GE Searle begins testing aspartame for safety. Dr. Harold Wiseman, an independent biochemist at the University of Wisconsin, tests aspartame on infant monkeys and of the seven test subjects, one dies and five of the others have grand mal seizures. 1971. Neuroscientist Dr. John Olney informs G.E. Searle that his studies show that aspartic acid, one of the ingredients in aspartame, caused holes in the brains of infant mice. One of Searle's own researchers confirms Dr. Olney's findings in a similar study. 1973. G.E. Searle applies for FDA approval and submits over a hundred studies they claim support the safety of aspartame. One of the first FDA scientists to review the data states that the information provided is not adequate to assess the potential toxicity and that further clinical tests are needed. 1974, the FDA grants aspartame its first approval for restricted use in dry goods. Dr. Olney and consumer advocate attorney Jim Turner file objections against aspartame's approval. 1976, Turner and Olney's petition triggers an FDA investigation into GE Searle. The investigation finds Searle's practices full of inaccuracies and manipulated test data. 1977. The FDA, for the first time in its history, requests a criminal investigation of a company, GE Searle, for concealing material facts and making false statements. That year, GE Searle hires Washington insider Donald Rumsfeld as its new CEO. Later, Samuel Skinner, U.S. attorney in charge of the aspartame investigation, leaves the U.S. Attorney's Office to take a job at G.E. Searle. Skinner's withdrawal and resignation stalls the investigation so long that the statute of limitations runs out and charges are dropped. 
and you're probably able to guess how this one turns out, but instead of me boring you to tears with the rest of the details, please do hop on over to the Organic Consumers Association website. For the rest of the story, I promise it's an eye-opener as to how our government really works. A shout-out, though, to all the good people who did their best to stop its approval, as aspartame is perhaps the most contested ingredient to ever enter the modern food supply. Now, if you're interested in personal testimonials, a quick search at any search engine for topics like aspartame poisoning will most likely result in an avalanche of thousands of stories from people who have had horrible experiences with this ingredient. Consumers have reported a whopping 7,000 adverse side effects to the FDA, including memory loss, depression, anxiety, grand mal seizures, blindness, tinnitus, weight gain, and high blood pressure. This ingredient has also been linked with all forms of killer chronic disease such as cancer, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, autism, kidney disease, liver damage, multiple sclerosis, and brain disorders like tumors, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's disease. And if that weren't enough, it turns out there's a high probability that aspartame is a primary vector in Gulf War syndrome, as those troops were given pallets of diet soda that had been stored in hot desert warehouses exceeding 86 degrees Fahrenheit. These days, it's critical to have honest, reliable information to avoid the disinformation disseminated by industry, media, and government. And so I'd like to give thanks to DrAxe.com, the U.S. Right to Know website, and the Organic Consumers Association, all of whose articles help me to shine a much-needed light on this subject. If you want the best up-to-date information to keep your brain in optimal condition, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.